Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The Bob's Burgers movie comes out in May this year, so before you see the Belcher family on the big screen, get caught up on the life of the man himself, Bob. In this video, we're going to explore the life of everybody's favourite burger aficionado and family man from childhood all the way to today. Hi, I'm Lydia and this is The Complete Bob Belcher Timeline. But first, a big thank you to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website builder that makes it easy and simple to create your own blog, shop or CV. There are tons of customizable templates for you to choose from. You've got things like membership areas, email marketing, and so much more. You can also track your visitor data so you can find out who's coming to your website and where they are coming from. I created my website fairly easily and I'm pretty proud of it too. I've adapted my scripts into articles so they are easily searchable. I also embedded my videos onto the site and linked my social links too. It was honestly so awesome to see how many tools there were to make your website even better, so I'm so excited to keep going. So if you want to give it a go and create your own website, then just head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash screen portal to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And the link is in the description below. Bob's Childhood Bob's full name is Robert Belcher Jr. and he was born in 1967 and is a third generation restaurateur. Bob's formative years have been slowly interwoven in different episode storylines. In the episode Bob Fires the Kids, Bob tells his children about his childhood after finding a box of his quote unquote toys. Joke's on you, Dad! Someone filled your toy box with trash! At a young age, Bob worked alongside his father at Big Bob's Diner. His only source of childhood wonder was playing with a scouring pad named Brilly, a rusty spatula and a bar of soap shaped like a dog, which he called Mr. Doglovich. But Bob was discouraged to play during work hours. Get back to work, Bob. And so making him realize that his childhood was horrible. Lynn, I just realized something. I had a bad childhood. Yeah, I know. Throughout Bob's very few childhood flashbacks, his mother is never introduced, so we can only assume that she died very early in Bob's childhood. In one episode, we learn that he and his mother built gingerbread houses together, which was one of his very few favorite childhood memories. In Father of the Bob, we learn that Bob had a knack for unique burgers since he was a kid. Henry, I present to you, baby, you can chive my car burger. It seems that Bob's childhood was all about work and keeping to his father's status quo. Teen to early adult Bob attended Buchanan Middle School and at the age of 13 he was strung along by a female student and dumped on the steps before a school dance. In between Bob's childhood, teenage years and adulthood, we learn that Bob worked for his father until 1994 when he was 24. In a flashback, Big Bob surprises Bob with the news he will change the diner's name to Bob and Sons. But Bob says no to his father because he's impossible to work with. This argument ends with Bob saying he'll start his own restaurant where he can finally be creative with his burger ideas. Bob meets Linda in the 90s. We know that Bob may not have been the smoothest guy in his teen years, but he did date as an adult. Already adorning a moustache, Bob once dated a woman named Barbara Bunkley the year before he met Linda. They had a date at a local bar with a love testometer. We are unsure exactly when Bob and Linda started dating, but we do know how they met. Linda was engaged to Hugo, but wasn't happy at the idea of marrying him. While at the bar, Linda accidentally hits Bob in the face and her ring gets caught in his moustache. Thus beginning their epic love story and Linda leaves Hugo for the hotshot restaurateur. I thought you ran off with Bob, the hotshot restaurateur. I did! 
In Bob's Burgers pilot episode, we learn that Bob and Linda got married in City Hall on September 3rd. By Hugo Stabman calling Bob a hotshot restaurateur, we can deduce that Bob was already starting his burger business by the time he met Linda. In the pilot episode, we learn that Bob and Linda have been owners for roughly around 10 years. He later explains that they worked during their wedding day because they couldn't afford not to. At the time, Bob didn't have enough money to buy Linda a ring, but much later, Bob finally saves enough money to buy a diamond ring that Linda deserves. But the kids manage to lose it. Instead of being disappointed, Linda says she never needed a ring, only her Bobby. All love is in everything we've built together, after you begged me to settle for you. Fans have fallen head over heels with Bob and Linda's marriage. They are opposites, with Linda being more flashy and open-minded and Bob being more reserved and introverted. They seem to really work well together and Bob and Linda actually spend most of their days working or too tired to really go out much together. But they make the most of it and are understanding. In the episode Can't Buy Me Math, Bob is willing to follow along with Linda's Valentine's Day plans, even a striptease. Despite being watched by Jimmy Pesto, he does it anyway for his wife. Take a seat, Lynn. I'm going back on the table. Do it! Woo! Bob becomes a father. The Belcher family are perhaps the most wholesome family on TV, especially when you compare them to the likes of the Griffins, American Dad, or even the Simpsons. And despite their constant money struggles, Bob always tries his best to give his kids the best start in life. You love us, you love us. I do. Nerd! Bob's first child is the eccentric Tina Ruth Belcher. When it comes to his firstborn, Bob does not have the easiest time figuring out her teen hormones, but despite this, he has proven to be a pretty good dad. In the episode Cab Bob, Bob takes a second job as a taxi driver so he can afford to throw Tina a 13th birthday party. However, Tina decides she does not want to have the party because Jimmy Jr. can't go. Bob and Jimmy Pesto Sr., his father, are enemies, and despite Bob, he doesn't allow his son to go. This is unless Bob shaves his beloved moustache, and for the sake of Tina, he does it just so she can be happy. After Tina, Bob had his first and only son, Eugene Jean Belcher. Unlike Linda, Bob has a harder time looking up to Jean's quirky ways. But they do share some sweet moments. They find common ground in the episode Spaghetti Western and Meeples. Incredible, your farts smell like mine. Oh, really great, like are you guys bonding again? And bond over Bob's favorite childhood music in Laser Inth. In Best Burger, Gene reveals that he believed Bob saw him as a screw up. But Bob comes to realize that his son is just different in his own way. Listen, Gene, you may get distracted from time to time, but I love you and I love who you are. And Last but definitely not least is the youngest Belcher, Louise. Fans are well aware that Bob and Louise have the closest relationship. They are partners in crime and Louise is definitely a daddy's girl on all accounts. It's no wonder statement that they share some really cute moments together. One of my personal favorites is in the episode Carpe Museum, when he is really proud that he finds out that Louise wants to take over the family business. So when you run the restaurant, will you call it Louise's Burgers? I don't know. Maybe. Daddy. Bob's Burgers restaurant goes through a lot of problems. When we first meet Bob, his family and restaurant, we learn they're having their third reopening. According to the intro, the restaurant went through a fire, a rat infestation, and a broken front window. Fans theorize that Bob opened the restaurant sometime in 1998, before or after Tina was born. It was Bob's dream to own his own restaurant where he could be creative with his burger ideas. You will not think of something better because new baconings is perfect. It's hilarious, right? Thus Bob's Burgers becoming well known for the burgers of the day. 
Despite Bob being a good cook, his business does not become a hotspot or generate a lot of revenue. Bob, Linda, Tina, Louise and Jean all work in the restaurant, mainly because Bob can't afford to hire real employees. He even tells the kids... And I feel like I should tell you, I'd fire all of you if I could. Bob! Throughout the series, Bob has faced many problems, from low income to pay rent, a small fire and his trusty flat top needing replacement. He has also been under the strict vigilance of Hugo, the local health inspector. In the pilot episode, Hugo shuts down the restaurant over rumours that Bob uses human flesh for his meat patties. Hugo soon learns that Bob is the man Linda left him for, and because of this, Hugo makes it his mission to ruin Bob's business with any possible violation. Bob has few friends. During the seasons of Bob's Burgers, Bob has no real friend group. He spends most of his time with Linda and the kids. The only people considered to be his friends are Mort and Teddy, his most consistent customers. Mort is the owner of the crematorium next door to the restaurant and we can only assume that Mort ate at Bob's Burgers one day and has been a loyal customer since. We are unaware of how and when Bob met Teddy, but even so, he's the local handyman eating one of Bob's burgers every single day, becoming so close to the Belchers that the kids call him Uncle Teddy. While being his most loyal customer, Bob never really sees him as a best friend, no matter what Linda says. Best friends till the very end. Len. Bob will often tease Teddy, such as the time he got him to eat a sponge. Don't feed a guy a sponge, Bobby. <laughs> you don't feed a guy a sponge. You put it in your mouth, Teddy. <sighs> but really, I think he does care for him deep down, as in the episode Friends with Burger Fitz, he is genuinely worried about Teddy's health. Although Bob is reluctant to admit it, Teddy is really his closest friend. Besides Teddy and Moore, Bob has a fair few enemies. Jimmy Pesto serves as Bob's counterpart. He is handsome, successful and has a thriving business. And Bob is at constant war with Jimmy. I'm Bob and I like Kale. Kale! There's nothing wrong with Kale. In Easy Commercial, Easy go Commercial, Jimmy purposefully steals Bob's football star to film his own commercial to steal business from Bob during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Bob also has to deal with Mr. Fish Odor, the rich, eye patch wearing landlord. He often butts heads with Fish Odor over being late on rent. At the end of the day, Bob is an everyday family man who is trying to make ends meet while pursuing his passion for cooking. While dealing with his conniving kids, he is luckily supported by Linda, who believes in his drive to keep going. And so that completes the timeline of Bob Belcher. What's your favourite Bob's Burgers moment? And let me know in the comments which character I should look at next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.